What do you need to know about the psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior or the MCAT psychology section of the MCAT? This is the topic of today's video, so stick around because I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this MCAT section. Hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an admissions associate at BMO Academic Consulting. Make sure you subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like us to help you prepare for the MCAT, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. As a quick tip, check out the timestamps in the description of this video to navigate to specific sections of the video that you're interested in. I'll cover an introduction to the MCAT psychology section, discuss what this section looks like, and lastly, tell you how you can study for this section. So first, let me introduce the psychology section of the test. You will be tested on your understanding of the relationships between social stratification and access to care and how psychological, social, and biological factors influence patient behavior and perceptions. The MCAT psychology section emphasizes concepts that physicians must know in order to serve an increasingly diverse patient population. This section will contain approximately 65% introductory psychology questions, 30% introductory sociology questions, and 5% introductory biology questions combined with scientific inquiry and reasoning skills. This section incorporates concepts taught at many universities in first semester psychology and sociology courses as well as introductory biology. The psychology and sociology section covers the following foundational concepts. Biological, psychological, and sociocultural factors influence behavior and behavior change. That's 35%. Biological, psychological, and sociocultural factors influence the way that individuals perceive, think about, and react to the world, 25%. Psychological, sociocultural, and biological factors influence the way we think about ourselves and others, as well as how we interact with others, that's 20%. Cultural and social differences influence well-being, 15%. Social stratification and access to resources influence well-being, 5%. Now, what does this section look like? When you take the test, the psychology section is the last of the four sections that you will complete and follows an optional 10 minute break. In this final MCAT section, you will have 95 minutes to answer 59 questions. Out of these 59 questions, 44 are passage based. You will be presented with 10 passages about psychology and sociology topics, and you will be asked four to seven passage based questions after each passage. There will also be 15 standalone discrete questions dispersed in between passages. Each question in this section will address one or a few of the four skills outlined by the AAMC. Knowledge of scientific concepts and principles, scientific reasoning and problem solving, reasoning about the design and execution of research, and data-based and statistical reasoning. Now, how can you study for this section? First, you need to take a full-length MCAT diagnostic test. Don't worry about trying to ace your diagnostic exam. The goal is just to understand exactly where you stand as you embark on your MCAT preparations. For your diagnostic, we recommend using a full-length exam from the AAMC website. Complete the exam in one sitting, ideally in an environment that mimics test conditions. Using a diagnostic MCAT will help to ensure that the study schedule you create will effectively address your strengths and areas for improvement. Use your diagnostic test results to guide your MCAT preparations by determining which areas you need to focus on the most. To get started, create an outline that breaks down each foundational concept that you will need to study. So rather than just putting down study psychology on your to-do list, first break each content area down into manageable subjects. Use the AAMC's list of subtopics as a guide to ensure that there are no gaps in your preparation. So for example, for the foundational concept of how cultural and social differences influence well-being, start by focusing one study session on a specific content category, such as the link between social structures and human interactions or the demographic characteristics that define a society. Investigate how a patient's social and demographic background influences their perception of health and disease, as well as the efficacy of their healthcare team and therapeutic interventions. After covering each topic by reading your textbook or by reviewing coursework, do a check-in and ensure that you feel comfortable explaining the information out loud to yourself without relying on any study materials. Continue this for the main foundational concepts. In addition, another great way to study is to make quizzes for yourself to test your content knowledge. Try to see if you can teach a friend the topic and practice with flashcards that you make yourself. 
While it is easier to purchase flashcards, making them yourself is a useful study strategy that helps to facilitate active learning. After focusing the first half of your MCAT preparation on content review, check your progress by taking your next full-length MCAT practice test. Switch gears now to the practice phase of your MCAT preparation. So in the final months of your preparation, at least 70% of your study time should be spent completing MCAT practice questions. Keeping your focus and avoiding fatigue during a seven and a half hour test is tricky. So the last tip that I wanna give you is to build up your endurance for test day. Now, how can you accomplish this? Deliberately and gradually work to build your endurance over the course of the months of your MCAT preparation by using your study time to build up stamina. As you study, start to get comfortable sitting and studying for 95 minutes straight. Over time, work up to studying for four 95 minute periods in a row with short breaks in between, just like on test day. Okay, so this will wrap up another video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any questions that I didn't cover in this video. Are you struggling with the MCAT psychology section of the test? Let me know in the comment section and I'll get back to you with my recommendations. Lastly, if you'd like us to help you prepare for the MCAT, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Thanks for watching, bye for now.